All right, guys, hello and welcome to the course. In this video, we are going to be working with data pre-processing. So if you already know a little bit about this, feel free to skip. But something that's really important in machine learning is that we have our data properly processed because data is everything when it comes to what we're actually putting into these algorithms. So first, how do you deal with missing data? Now, all the data sets that we're going to be using in this course are all nice and packaged up for you courtesy of me and Kaggle and Scikit-learn. But when you get in the real world, you'll find often that you're gonna have missing data. So how do we deal with that? Because the model cannot handle missing data. It will throw an error and it won't work. Well, there are three things that we can do. One, we can remove the feature. If let's say most of the points in that feature are missing, like for instance, if you have something like um, customer satisfaction, and you find that only 2% of your customers entered that survey, then maybe that data isn't going to be good for a machine learning model that's using a bunch of data on transactions. Also, you could remove the individual data point. So if the individual data point doesn't really have any information in it, let's say they only filled out one feature, but you have like 10 features, it might just be better to remove the data point. And the third option, if there's only a few missing data points here and there, and uh, overall, you feel like that data point can still contribute to the model and overall the features can still contribute to the model. What you're going to want to do is you can set the missing value by using the mean or the median of the data set and then input that as the missing value. So the mean would obviously be if you have a data set with a small scale, but if you have numbers that are super, super large and super, super small, it might make more sense to input the missing value as the median. And so right here, you can see that is how we do it using Python. And uh, this is pretty simple. I will have a GitHub link down below, and that's where you're gonna find all the code for this course, including there's a notebook called pre-processing, which is gonna have all the code that we have here. Next, dealing with categorical variables. So something that you're going to notice is that in machine learning, not all variables are going to be just a set number. And so if you have something that's a categorical variable, as in like it's either this or this and it can't be in between, for instance, color, it's either red or it's yellow or it's green, it can't be in between. With that, you're gonna have to convert that column, which would say the word red, red, yellow, green, yellow, and you're gonna have to convert that into these numbers. And so this represents, is it red? Is it yellow? Is it green? And you can see here when we convert it to sort of a binary format, then the model is able to deal with categorical variables. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do something called one-hot encoding, and it's super, super easy to implement using scikit-learn, and of course you'll have the code here that you can use. Next, we're gonna talk about feature scaling. So feature scaling is something that it works sometimes, it doesn't work all the time, but it's at least useful to try depending on the algorithm and the problem that you're using. And so the idea with feature scaling is that if you have two variables, like say population and average age, these two variables are very, very far apart. They're on completely different scales. And that might make it hard for the model to really interpret what's going on. And so what we do is we scale the features by taking, essentially, if you've taken statistics, the new x is going to be equal to the initial x minus the minimum x and then the max minus the min and you can also just take the z-score, but the idea is that we get all of the variables on the same scale. So just to sort of visualize this, if you can think, if we have a variable y and a variable x, and they're directly correlated to each other, this line right here, this red line, is going to be what the correlation is gonna look like. However, if you have a variable y and a variable x that is only one-tenth of the way correlated, like let's say the y is 10 times as big as the x, then that means that you're going to get a correlation like this blue line. And the idea is that for the model sometimes, if it has a stronger correlation like this red line, it's going to be able to perform more accurate predictions than if it has a weaker correlation like this blue line. And so in order to do feature scaling in scikit-learn, all you're gonna to have to do is import your standard scalar and then set your x equal to scalar.fit transform x. 
Last and most importantly, we're gonna talk about choosing features. So when you're choosing features, it's really important that you don't have any miscellaneous features. So for instance, there might be an ID column that just contains the ID of the data point. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, some things to note, you never, never, never wanna have more features than you have data points. Uh, you may say, wait, how would that be possible? I'm gonna have like, you know, 10 features and a thousand data points. And that's true for a lot of instances, but sometimes when you get to stuff like sentiment analysis and you're working with words, your features could be, is it this word? Is it this word? Is it this word? And you can get um, more features than you have data points. And so that's a big, big, big no-no. Also, you need to make sure that your features are correlated to the output. The idea behind machine learning is that we're trying to, from initial conditions, find an output value. So if the variables are completely unrelated, like, okay, um, let's try to predict someone's weight based on you know, what time they woke up. Okay, something random like that. If you just have a bunch of miscellaneous features, then the model isn't going to be able to perform strong predictions. Also, you wanna make sure that the features are not too related to other features, because if you do that, the model is going to overfit. And basically what overfitting is when the model is really, really accurate on the data that you give it, but if you give it new data, it doesn't really work well on the new data because it's so used to the old data that I was training on. And so when you have features that are very, very closely related to each other, uh, you can basically trick the model into making itself super, super accurate on the test set. So you want different features that aren't directly related. So an instance of that would be like if you had one feature that was time in seconds and then another feature that was th that same time but in hours instead. That wouldn't be helpful to your model because those two features are redundant and it's going to most likely make your model overfit. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Remember, all the code for this course is on GitHub. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a message down below and I'll see you next time where we're gonna work with regression. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now, if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Scribd. Now, just as a side note, Scribd did not sponsor me to make this video. I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Scribd is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine, and instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, ebooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no-brainer, and right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd, and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months and I can continue learning and you can also continue learning with your 60 day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.